<laughs> wow, folks, how you doing? Man, we're getting ready to have a ball. We're getting ready to have a lot of fun, folks, seriously. Listen, I paid to do this. It is a dream come true for me to be able to bring this gentleman on stage. Oh, man, you've seen him on tour with Janet Jackson, Whitney Houston, Beyonce, wow, Paul McCartney. You've seen him with, you've seen him with, uh, wow, a whole lot of Elton John, Billy Joel. You've seen him on Arsenio. You've seen him on Jay Leno, David Letterman. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to bring to the stage, Ree Reed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, listen, like the gentleman just said, like the young man just said, we're getting ready to have a ball. We're getting ready to have fun. Thank you, by the way, young man. We're getting ready to have a lot of fun. Seriously, we're going to have a ball. I don't guarantee anything, but I guarantee we're getting ready to have a lot of fun. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Moon River, long as the now, I'll cross you in style. Someday. You know why I do that? Because I've got serious brain damage. <laughs> Folks, listen. To, today I'm doing this show. But last week, they got me to do a show at an insane asylum. When I got there, I was coming down the hall with this doctor. And I looked up and I saw a man hanging from the ceiling. And just below him was another man mopping the floor. So I said to the doctor, say, what's he doing hanging from the ceiling like that? The doctor said, oh, he thinks he's a light bulb, but I'm going to give him some therapy. So the doctor goes up, and he starts to unscrew the guy. And he's taking him down the hall, and the man that was mopping the floor was tagging right along with him. So the doctor turned around and said, hey, and just where do you think you're going? The man said, well, hell, I can't work back there in the dark. <laughs> You took the light. <laughs> Got the light. <laughs> Folks, I do travel around a lot doing these shows. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I checked into this hotel. And just as I was checking in, this roach crawled right across the roster. They don't have a computer. They still have a roster like old school. Just uh, He crawled right across the roster. I'm looking at him. So I called the clerk over and I said, hey, listen. I've been bitten by a lot of bugs, and I've stayed in a lot of hotels, but this is the first time one ever came down to see which room I was getting. <laughs> first time a roach ever came to check me out. See this watch right here? Sterling silver. Platinum. Sterling silver. <laughs> I had one just like it. In that hotel, the hotel had a swimming pool. And a tennis court. And I wanted to go downstairs and play tennis and go swimming. So I left the watch on the dresser with a note that said, this is just a substitute. The real watch is in my safety deposit box. Went downstairs, went swimming, played some tennis, came back, watch gone. Note laying there that said, gee, sir, thanks for the substitute. I'm just a substitute myself. The regular burglar that was going to rob this room is away on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Touring, touring around, went down south. I thought things had got better down there. They haven't. Walked in this restaurant. As soon as I walked in, waitress came running up to me. I'm sorry, sir, but we don't serve black people in here. I said, don't serve black people. I don't eat black people no way. Just give me a fish sandwich and a, a Coke and a pile of mode. I don't need black people. <laughs> Police pulled me over. Asked to see my driver's license, registration, and insurance. Looked at my driver's license and said, it says here, you should be wearing glasses. I said, well, I have contacts. He said, I don't give a damn who you know. You're still getting a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Another police pulled me over, told me I was doing 33 in a 30-mile-an-hour speed zone, and I'm going to give you a ticket. I said, a ticket? The least you could do is give me a warning. He fired two shots over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Told you he was going to have some fun. Folks, remember when everybody was buying those designer jeans? 
You know, they're still buying them. I remember once I bought a pair, and when I put them on, in the back back here, they say Sassoon. My sister saw them, liked them, went and bought her a pair, and when she puts them on her big ass, in the back, they say Sassoon. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> I went up a friend's house of mine today. He's standing up in a chair with a rope tied around his waist from the ceiling. I said, hey, man, what are you doing? He says, I'm committing suicide. I said, suicide? Well, if you're committing suicide, why you got the rope tied around your waist? He said, because when I tried to suck around my neck, I almost choked to death. <laughs> I got booked in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Silk Style Productions. Now, we'll forget it. And we took this friend of ours with me on the bus. And it was a Greyhound bus, you know, the early years. And my friend, we looked over and saw a lady sitting across from us breastfeeding her baby. So my friend looked over at her and said, say, listen, that baby sure is fat and healthy. How would you get that baby so fat and healthy? She said, I don't know. All I do is feed it milk and orange juice. He said, oh, yeah, um, which one's the orange juice? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm serious. I'm, I'm only serious. I went to visit a friend in Los Angeles, and we're walking along the beach, and out of nowhere, the seagulls appears and lets off a load, and it lands right on the side of my man's face. I said, golly, man, I want to get some toilet tissue. He said, no, no, that's okay. He's probably miles away by now. <laughs> see? 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 Right there, the gray ones. See? see? <laughs> um, folks, listen. I've got a lot of friends in show business, and a lot of them do drugs before they come up here on stage. But I don't try nothing like that, because every time I try something like that, I always wind up telling the same story twice. Folks, listen, I've got a lot of friends in show business, and a lot of them do drugs before they come up here on stage. <laughs> but I don't try nothing like that, because every time I try something like that, I always wind up telling the same story twice. <laughs> <laughs> did you folks see, did you guys read in the paper where this guy walks in the store and he robs the store with a two by four, no gun, no knife, a piece of wood. Walked in and said, all right, give me the money. Clerk said, man, you better get the hell on out of this store. He beat that clerk all over the store. Clerk said, all right, don't hit me no more, don't hit me no more, take the money, take it all, take it all, take it all, take it all. And when you get out of here, go buy you a gun because you're going to mess around and kill somebody with that two by four. <laughs> man. <laughs> But, uh, folks, today I did something I always wanted to do. I signed a contract with Motown Records. You can applaud that. It's okay. You can applaud that. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's right. For a dollar down, I'll be getting six CDs a month for the next six months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> folks, uh, <laughs> my, my time is just about up. I got to get out of here. But before I go, I'm going to tell you a story. You folks probably all heard of the Hunchback, and you probably all know that the Hunchback worked at a castle. But what you probably don't know is that at night, the, hunch, the Hunchback would take a shortcut through a graveyard. Well, one night he was going down through the graveyard, and up from the grave pops the devil and says, Hey, what are you doing coming through this graveyard? He said, I was just going home. The devil said, You got any gold? He says, No. The devil said, Well, what you got? He said, All I got is this Hunchback here on my back. The devil swished, took it, and disappeared back down in the grave. Hunch straightened up. And the next day, he went back to work. And at work, he had a friend who had a big knot on his foot up to here, walked like this. He looked up and saw the hunch coming. He said, damn, hunch, what happened to your hump? He said, man, last night I was going down through the graveyard, and the devil just hopped about the grave and took it off my back and disappeared back down in the grave. He looked at his foot. He said, damn, I walked through there tonight. That night, he was going down through the graveyard, and sure enough, up from the grave, pops the devil says, hey, what are you doing coming through this graveyard? He said, I was just going home. The devil said, you got any gold? He says, no. He said, what you got? He said, all I got is this big knot right here on my foot. The devil said, you got a hump? He said, no. The devil said, we're here. Take this one. <laughs> Thank you, folks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>